Day 146, and today we debated the atomic bomb, and there are two sides to every story. And I got this lesson from the Stanford History Education Group, or SHEG, um, one of my favorite organizations. I always provide a deeper history, so thank you, SHEG. And there are two fundamental ways people see Hiroshima, and the first is as victimization. And I'm going to read this excerpt, and it reads... Japanese still recall the war experience primarily in terms of their own victimization. For them, World War II calls to mind the deaths of family and acquaintances on distant battlefields, and more vividly the prolonged systematic bombings of their cities. If it is argued that the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima was necessary to shock the Japanese to surrender, how does one justify the hasty bombing of Nagasaki only three days later? Before the Japanese had time to investigate Hiroshima, and formulate a response. So that's one side of the coin, the Japanese as victims. Now, the other side would be Hiroshima as triumph, and this excerpt reads, to most Americans, Hiroshima, the shattered, atomized, irradiated city, remains largely a symbol of triumph, marking the end of a horrendous global conflict and the effective demonstration of a weapon that has prevented another world war. It is hard to imagine that the Japanese would have surrendered without the atomic bomb. Japanese battle plans that were in place when the bombs were dropped called for a massive suicidal defense of the home islands, in which the imperial government would mobilize not only several million fighting men, but also millions of ordinary citizens who had been trained and indoctrinated to resist to the end with primitive makeshift weapons. For Japanese to even discuss surrender was against the law. So this is more of the classic American perspective. Now, there are five sources I want you to use, and the first is from a textbook, an old school textbook, and the textbook version of what happened is, even before the bomb was tested, American officials began to debate how to use it. Admiral William Leahy, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, opposed using the bomb because it killed civilians indiscriminately. He believed that an economic blockade and conventional bombing would convince Japan to surrender. Secretary of War Henry Stimson wanted to warn the Japanese about the bomb while at the same time telling them they could keep the emperor if they surrendered. Secretary of State James Burns, however, wanted to drop the bomb without any warning to shock Japan into surrendering. surrendering excuse me. President Truman later wrote that he regarded the bomb as a military weapon and never had any doubts that it, that it should be used. His advisors had warned him to expect massive casualties if the United States invaded Japan. Truman believed it was his duty as president to use every weapon available to save American lives. Okay, until I look at this source, it's kind of a mixed bag. It can go either way. Uh, you can use it for both arguments. Now, document B, it's entitled, Thank God for the Atomic Bomb, and it reads, My division, like most of the ones transferred from Europe, was going to take part in the invasion at Honshu. The people who preferred invasion to A-bombing seem to have no intention of proceeding to the Japanese front themselves. I have already noted what a few more days would mean to the luckless troops and sailors on the spot. On Okinawa, only a few weeks before Hiroshima, 123,000 Japanese and Americans killed each other. War is immoral. War is cruel. Now, this is going to buttress the American argument saying, thank God for the bomb, because without it, you know, something like Okinawa would have happened again. Document C is entitled Stopping Russia. Now, Burns was concerned about Russia's post-war behavior. Russian troops had moved into Hungary and Romania, and Burns thought it would be very difficult to persuade Russia to withdraw her troops from these countries, that Russia might be more manageable if impressed by American military might, and that a demonstration of the bomb might impress Russia. Now, this source is James Byrne. He was one of Truman's advisors on the atomic bomb. In addition to defeating Japan, he wanted to keep the Soviet Union from expanding its influence in Asia and to limit its influence in Europe. Manhattan Project scientists um, met with Burns on May 28th and wrote about the meeting in 1980. So, in addition to stopping Japan in this post-World War II world, would the bomb be useful? You can argue that on one side. Now, Document D comes from a survivor. And this one's a little lengthy, but it reads, One of my classmates, I think his name was Fujimoto, he muttered something and pointed outside the window, saying, A B-29 is coming. He pointed outside with his finger, so I began to get up from my chair and asked him, Where is it? Looking in the direction that he was pointing towards, I got up on my feet, but I was not yet in an upright position when it happened. 
All I can remember was a pale lightning flash for two or three seconds. Then I collapsed. I don't know how much time passed before I came to. It was awful, awful. The smoke was coming in from from somewhere above the debris. Sandy dust was flying around. I crawled over the debris trying to find someone who who were still alive. Then I found one of my classmates lying alive. I held him in my arms. It is hard to tell. His skull was cracked open. His flesh was dangling out his head. He only had one eye left, and it was looking right at me. He told me to go away. Oh, so I was running. Hands were trying to grab my ankles. They were asking me to take them along. I was only a child then, and I was horrified at so many hands trying to grab me. I was still in pain, too. So all I could do was to get rid of them. It's terrible to say, but I kicked their hands away. I still feel bad about that. I went to Mayuki Bridge to get some water. At the riverbank, I saw so many people collapse there. I was small, so I pushed down the river along the small steps. The water was dead people. I had to push the bodies aside to drink the muddy water. We didn't know anything about radioactivity that time. I stood up in the water, and so many bodies were floating away along the stream. So certainly the Japanese argument can use this uh, from a first-hand account, the horrors of the atomic bomb. And some people are, you know, uh, wired to use data. And here's the hard numbers. Uh, estimates of casualties at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay, you can just hit the numbers here. Okay, we're talking um, 195,000 dead, I mean, injured. It's people, how they were killed. Absolute horror show. So I divided the class in two and made you devise your argument. And after going through all the debates, this is essentially what people came up with. Now, the people who were supporting the Americans said, Pearl Harbor, you started it. You sucker punch it. You started it. We're going to finish. Baton Death March. You tortured our soldiers. You made them march, and so many died and starved. Kamikaze. Suicidal planes going into our ships. Brutality. The brutality of Japanese uh, past events, like the rape of Nanking. Horror show. These are the people they were dealing with. And on a practical level, hey, it ended the war. It ended. You, want, you both want to end the war? We ended it. And you can say it saved lives compared to a land invasion. That's what Truman thought. Also, hey, the Japanese, you sided with the Nazis, and Nazis are no good. And Bushido Code would prohibit surrender. We had to do something drastic to do it. Now, on the Japanese side, you can say, hey, when the Americans arrived in 1853, you screwed up everything. We still remember that. Japan forced uh, to fight America due to the Hull Memo violations, in particular having our oil cut off. Hey, if you would have given us oil, we wouldn't have had to do Pearl Harbor. Hey, America, you imprisoned Japanese Americans, some of them third generation. What kind of nation just gives up on their people and takes away their civil rights? Hiroshima compared to Pearl Harbor? Come on, that's no argument. You know, you kick me in the shin, that doesn't give me right to shoot you in the face. I mean, you can't compare the two. Uh, many civilians were killed, harms by, harmed by bombs. Say what you will about this. These were soldiers. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, a lot of civilians. And three days, come on, three days, give us enough time to figure it out. So that was the debate, and we went back and forth. And there's no clear right or wrong answer. But I wanted you to see two sides. We had some really good talks today. And then we ended with this question. If you had to make a textbook and choose one photo to summarize this historical event, what would you choose? And I'm going to show you ten images. Number one, Pearl Harbor. Number two, a propaganda poster from the U.S., uh, starved American soldiers from the Bataan Death March. There's General Tibbets and his plane, the Enola Gay, that dropped the bomb in Hiroshima. Now there's Hiroshima City after the atomic bomb, and what you can't see is all the radioactive material and whatnot, and the suffering that went on, but here's a picture of Hiroshima. Next image is graphic, just to warn you. The burns of a little boy after Hiroshima just shows the absolute cruelty and brutality of atomic weaponry. Number seven, a girl with her skin hanging in strips after the atomic bomb. Absolute horror. Some kids in class couldn't even identify the person. Here's hair, here's eyes, there's mouth. You can get that. Eight, here is an American soldier about to get decapitated with the katana. Now this is a picture of Unit 731 performing medical experiments, including vivisections. That's cutting people open alive with no anesthesia. Now um, we know what the Nazis did with Mengele and the Angel of Death and that horror show. Well, Japan, you did something very similar to that. And then image number 10, the mushroom cloud. Now, we talked about that, but I was impressed how many people agreed with me. And I'm going to give you my opinion on something. I think number 10 is the only image 
that works. And I'll, I'll explain to you why. If I go back to the beginning, Pearl Harbor, clearly an American bias. Sucker punch, they got us. We had to fight back. Number two, propaganda. We're fighting from fear, you know, the fear of Japan. Clearly American bias. Three, showing the brutality and the cruelty and the starvation of our soldiers. Clearly American bias. Showing Japan bad, Japan bad, America good. Uh, this is not a ton of bias. Now, here's General Tibbetts with his Enola Gay plane. Slight bias, but still American bias, but the least of the bunch. Now, number five, clearly a Japanese bias. Look what you did, America. You decimated our town. How horrible is this? Look what you did to our little kids. You burnt them up like that. It looks like, you know, stinking Halloween here. How can you do that? Strong Japanese bias. Again, very similar to number six. You brutes. Look what you did to our people. Look what you did to this girl. My God, how can you do that? Strong Japanese bias. Here's some American bias. Look how cruel these Japanese are, decapitating our soldiers. You know, this is showing how horrible the Japanese were. American bias. Number 10 is free from bias. This is the mushroom cloud. Whether you think it was just, unjust, good thing, bad thing, Japanese perspective, American perspective, it happened. And you can put your own meaning into it. It's a primary source, and that's the beauty of a primary source. And I think it summarizes our story of the last two days pretty clearly. That mushroom cloud, once that went off, the world would never be the same as Oppenheimer said. And I'm in full agreement with him. So great debate today. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And um, I hope you can really take to heart that in history, there's deeper, deeper questions within these stories and always two sides to those stories. Thank you for watching.